peachydragon.com. Happy creative stuff. Hey, and welcome to another exciting episode of Happy Creative Stuff. So I've been doing some tutorials on how to do a 3D Powerpuff Girl. Uh, my Blossom model looks a little something like this. Professor? What's the matter? Okay, so I've already done a video called Research where I spoke about what other people did and how we can use that to establish our own approach and also about um, mapping and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to talk about how to actually get your reference material in to model with. So you want to make sure your 3D Studio Max is set up normally, I've got, which means you've got your left view, your front view, and your top view, and your perspective view. And I've also got the grids turned on for all of them. So what you do is you're going to be modeling in the center. That'll be on that center there. So you're going to create a plane. Okay, so I've got on the front view I'm creating it and I'll need another one on the side view but we can make that one later. So first things first, make sure that your segments are set to only one. You don't need to have multiple segments like that. You only need one segment selected and right click to deselect. Now I'm going to turn on push, push F3 so I can have the, the rendered mode where it's not just the outline. And then create a material. So I'm pushing M to open this. If it looks like this, this is the slate material editor. This is what people use these days, but I really, I was taught using the compact material system, so I still like to use this. Uh, you'll see there are a bunch of materials in here now because I was working on a previous project, but just ignore that. By default, it should just be blank material. So let's just call it um, Power Puff Front Reference. You can really call it whatever you like. So I've got that material, I want to put that on the plane, so you can drag and drop or use a shortcut. So now you need to put your texture onto this. So in your material, right at the top, you can either load it here at the diffuse channel there, or just scroll down to where you've got all your maps, and then you if there's anything turned on, you can turn it off. I'm gonna turn on diffuse and click there. This will normally take you straight to a bitmap selection because there was already something in here, I'm just gonna select bitmap there. And I'm gonna go to desktop, power path. Okay, this is just wherever you have your images. So I saved those images from last time. I've got this image of Blossom. Okay, and then I'm going to click this button so that it previews in the scene. Now, sometimes these might be stretched. So when you set up this plane, it's very important not to use these controls because you'll see it stretches the image as well, but it could be stretched either way. So what you do, there are a few ways to fix this. I'll show you the way that I prefer. You load a UVW map onto your plane. UVW map, it was down below the recording window, but you'll find it. And on this, there's an option called bitmap fit. And then you select exactly the same image. And what it does is it gets the proportions from that. After you've done that, if you need this to be larger or smaller, you can open up the gizmo and just resize on there. So I'm not resizing on the plane, I'm resizing on the map. And then if you want to adjust the position, you can do that. And I can go into plane and I can change the sizes there. So it's very important, I'm not using the stretch from 3D Studio Max, I'm just using the sizes in plane. So that's basically one done. What we'll need to do is I think, let me just see on the gizmo, if there are multiple, see her back is also on this one. So technically if you needed both, you could just use the same object, duplicate it and then move it over to have her back, which you might for the hair. So what you'll do is, let me just duplicate this material. And for this, I'm gonna make a second material. Let's call it side, just adding to the name. And I'm gonna pick a different diffuse map. Let's see, where's the one? There's the one with the pop of wheels from the side. I'm going to duplicate this by just simply shift dragging the whole object and I'm going to put that map on there. I'm also going to make sure that I click that button though, so it shows the preview. I can now move the gizmo over. Ah, it's a fake, okay. I made a copy in, in the instance instead of a copy. So let's quickly just redo that. I'm going to, okay, got out of it. 
Let's just do that again. Let's make a copy. I'm going to drag this material onto there. And now I can safely do that. Now this is in the wrong window, as you might have noticed, because it's not turned correctly. So I'm going to make sure angle snap is turned on. Over there, I'm going to select the rotation tool. Well, apparently the program is going to ignore me. Oh, there we go. Select, oh, it's because I had Gizmo selected plane. And I'm going to rotate it exactly 90 degrees. You can turn on force double sided in these materials if you wanted. It's already set up to two sided here, I see. Okay, so now that I've rotated that, if you go to your other windows, let me see, I'm just going to try and, there we go. And I'm going to switch this also. See what happens now? I can see my models are there. I need to move this plane backwards. And there we go. Now we've got those two set up and we can model in the middle comfortably. Okay, not in the top view, but in this view. Let's also set that F3. Got that set up. And if you want, you could duplicate this for the other side. It's not really required. But what I am going to do is duplicate this. And then I'm going to do what I said earlier. I'm going to change, move the gizmo over so that we've got her at the back of her head there for later. Now, what you might want to do is you might want to set these up on a separate layer just to simplify your life later. So I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to make a new layer called reference. The advantage of this is that I can freeze the layer or I can just hide it later if I don't want to see it. Cool, so that's how you set up your reference material. The next step would be modeling the actual 3D model before we get to mapping or anything like that. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, tell us what you think. Click the like button below. Otherwise, you can send us, follow us and send us messages on our Facebook pages. We've got two of them, our Twitter, the Instagram, the YouTube channel, or our traditional websites, if you like that kind of thing. This video is awesome. PeachyDragon.com Happy creative stuff.